delegates, ladies and gentlemen, it is my proud privilege to participate in this conference towards the geo-enabled economy. I'm very much grateful to the organizers for inviting me to this very important conference. The topic of this uh, conference is very apt and timely. Most of us believe that the economic growth is based on the use of natural resources and is perceived to be called as a development. We also know that the natural resources has formed the foundation of the human civilization. We all depend on the natural resources like land or water and biomass for our existence. The beginning of the agriculture was the masterly use of land resources for the organized production of the food. We created a social system comprising a political, economic, and industrial structures to advance our development. We have also seen that such developments lead to environmental degradation and north-south or a digital divide. Such inequalities in the social system affect the human beings and ultimately to the sustainability. The efficient management of the natural resources leads to sustainable development. We can address the issue of sustainability at three levels of the systems, global, social, and human. The global system comprises the entire earth and it sustains the human life by providing natural resources, energy, and supportive ecosystem. We also need to link the earth system with the social and human system to attain the sustainability. During the last two centuries or so, or after the Industrial Revolution, we have seen that the human and social systems have significantly affected our environment and become major driver or influencing the earth system. The earth system processes, especially the carbon cycle and ocean acidification, sea level changes, loss of biodiversity, modern agriculture induced pollution of reactive nitrogen and phosphorus, have reached to a level which can damage the earth system. Hence, it is pertinent to deliberate the manner in which we manage our natural resources and what is the role of geo-enabled services in this endeavor. Water is one of the most important natural resource and it's vital for our sustenance on this planet. Its availability or a distribution around the globe may change as the earth becomes warmer. It is important to understand the changing water cycle from the perspective of water cycle drivers, surface and subsurface water interactions, and water cycle human interaction. The question is how to respond to changing water cycle. We need to build insight into the changing water cycle. We get water from the precipitation and flows as the rivers. Precipitation patterns are likely to change and making availability of a fresh water uncertain. We have seen that the extreme events are increasing, low and moderate events are decreasing, though average rainfall is more or less same. This results in increased surface flows, but decreases percolation of water below the surface. We know that the vast majority of the fresh water circulates in aquifers below surface as a groundwater. Thus, the climate change can pose a threat to sustainability of the groundwater reserves in the long run. However, at present, the main reason for this depletion is its use for the agriculture in a seasonal cycle, scale. Increasing population has further enhanced the pressure on groundwater resources. We also know 
that the distribution of rainfall varies greatly across the country and year to year. We do talk about interlinking of rivers, the transfer of water across the basins, and catchment is a difficult and requires large amount of energy. However, we need to look at closely to link rivers, at least peninsular rivers. In the past, we have seen that humans migrated during the scarcity of water and the civilizations were lost. The Harappan civilization is one such case. So ultimately, it is expected that the humans will follow the areas where the water availability is ensured. What we need to do to find the solutions for the medium and short term to any threats of the any threats to water cycle and human interaction. Water stored, as the nation develops, the population also migrates to the coastal regions, mainly due to increased industrialization and commerce. The requirement of water in coastal regions have increased manifold during the last two decades. Seawater, which covers the two-thirds of the earth, is too salty for human consumption or irrigation and too corrosive for the industrial use. We need to learn to use this water. There are many large industrial complexes have started using the seawater. There have been also attempts to grow the variety of crops such as paddy, casuarina, and siliconia with the use of seawater. We should use this water in such in Luxweep Islands for the demand of the drinking water. We have successfully implemented this technology to provide the drinking water in many islands of the Luxweep. We also need to pay attention to the quality aspects of the water, especially for drinking and agriculture purposes. We need to consider impact on human health from pesticide residue, both in food and water. Indian agriculture is very sensitive to vagaries of monsoon and weather. Building a sustainable climate management has become an urgent task. We have set up agrometeorological service for the agriculture sector. The agrometeorology advisories at district level based on likely weather condition for next five days and crop specific agriculture practices are very popular with farmers which has been built around GIS. These advisories are provided through various communication means including SMS through mobile and web services. Currently 3.5 million farmers have been subscribing to this service. They pay about 800 to 900 rupees per year to get this specific information. Thus, the impact on this, on the productivity has been realized that is about 8%, which gets converted into GDP is rupees 50,000 crore rupees. This is the effective use of a knowledge which can help to find solution and adapt to changing weather and climate. This service is being enhanced at the village level, also at a medium range. The use of natural resources has been intensified with the rise in population and technological development. The intensive use of natural resources had led to overexploitation and environmental degradation. We need to consider the ecological aspect well while exploiting natural resources for the economic growth. The economic growth which allows to pollute our rivers and seas, destroys forest and affects biodiversity cannot be sustainable. The growth and environment are perceived to be always in the conflict. However, the knowledge about science of the earth and the social system allows us to make trade-offs and make wise decisions. We need to ensure 
technological security is a fundamental to the economic growth, especially due to the global concern about the climate change. We will need very robust information and decision support system to aid decision-making process for planning and implementation of various development schemes. Geographical Information System, or GIS, should be the mainstay around which such information decision support system can be built. Today, with a mature remote sensing system, global navigation system, geographic information system, and advances in computing and communication technologies, it is possible to build such decision support system and provide location and waste-based services. They recently launched Water Resources Information System by the Central Water Commission and the Indian Space Research Organization is one such example to provide the necessary information to facilitate the management of the water resources. In our country, we have very comprehensive legislation which defines the framework of policy, laws, and regulation to ensure the effective use of natural resources. However, the institutional mechanism and capacity is lacking for monitoring the implementation of the safeguards and regulations as well as to adhere to the standards. A science-based mechanism is desired to that decisions are based on scientific assessment of method of exploitation of natural resource and the environmental concerns. We need market-based instruments to provide incentives for the effective use of water resources or the energy efficiency. We are facing unprecedented and accelerating environmental and socioeconomic changes. We need to build services to ensure the water and ecological security. I am sure with the use of the method, especially geo-enabled services, we should be able to achieve this goal. I wish ex good deliberations in this conference and wish success to this conference. Thank you very much.